Corruption and Ethics in Global Business Ethics refers to the guidelines by which people relate to the world, such as how they conduct business, treat others, and how they care about their environment. Three philosophical principles regarding ethics include imperative principle, which is do what is right, utilitarian principle, which is do what produces the greatest good, and the generalization argument, do what is right, but filter the action by consideration of the consequences. While much has been written about fraud and fraud cases over the last decade, few specific details have been published. Instead, most financial literature describes fraud cases in very broad terms, leaving out specific accounting details. The growing complexity of our world has brought enormous new challenges, and the problems of today and tomorrow will not be solved with the solutions of the past. This new world requires a new thinking, and most importantly, a new understanding of how our fortunes are linked and how we must work together to create lasting prosperity. It is important that you, and particularly the accounting profession, understand how frauds like Enron, WorldCom, and Adelphia frauds were perpetrated. Perhaps with a better understanding of the detailed manner in which frauds are conducted, we can be better equipped to prevent such frauds from occurring again. The problem is that although we are very aware of corporate scandals, many frauds continue to evade discovery until they reach enormous size. Ask yourself, how can major frauds occur with the current reporting standards of the SEC, the U.S. audit requirements, and so many parties involved? We have auditors, board members, audit committee members, the regulators, financial analysts, and many others. So why do companies often seem unable to identify many types of fraud until they've inflicted major damage on our investors, lenders, suppliers, the public, and financial markets? The answer is we need to better educate those of you who should be able to identify the fraud. If you're aided with the knowledge of how specific acts of fraud are carried out, and have a strong basis in ethical decision making, it'll be easier not only to climb the corporate ladder, but to know which ladder to climb. So how do you choose wisely? We have our conscience, and we are influenced by cultural beliefs, fellow workers, family, friends, the law, religious beliefs, as well as our employer, our school, or the region of the country we live in. So what happens when you get a promotion? We're generally really excited about the new title and the new salary. However, we need to choose wisely and know what that promotion entails. What new responsibilities are we taking on? Do we have the background knowledge to take this job? And lastly, do we trust the team that we're working with? Each year, Transparency International publishes the Corruption Perceptions Index, which provides a measurement of the potential corruption risk per country. The CPI ranks 180 different countries by their perceived levels of corruption, as determined by expert assessments and opinion surveys. Violation of laws, such as the Foreign and Corrupt Practices Act, are more likely to occur in countries with high corruption risk. Note, however, that a low-risk country does not guarantee that there will be no corruption. Risk assessments should be thorough and focused upon operations in high-risk countries, but without ignoring low-risk countries. Corporate responsibility refers to a company's obligation to society, including the welfare of a wide range of stakeholders, the people and places affected by company activities. CRS mandates that a company must strive to provide quality products and quality service to its customers, provide an appropriate return on investment to shareholders, treat employees with dignity and respect, take care of the environment, meet legal obligations, and deal fairly with suppliers, lenders, and other business parties. Following legal rules is the starting point for making an ethical choice. A second way to resolve ethical questions is to apply the formal policies of the company. A third way to make an ethical choice is to follow the informal guidelines, such as moral intuition. Two principles that can help when making an ethical decision are the principle of consistency and the principle of respect. To apply the principle of consistency, we ask, what if everyone did it? To apply the principle of respect, one must make a choice that treats people with the greatest respect. Many companies have established a corporate ethics code, 
a well-designed corporate code should be monitored and enforced by top management. In some countries, federal legislatures have enacted new laws concerning fraud and corporate financial reporting. As the recent scandals have led investors to loss of confidence in the stock market and in the reliability of corporate financial reports. So how has this happened? As some company executives were pressured to make their numbers or drop out, the past decade became marred by some of the most serious corporate corruption in American history. The shameful scandals of Enron, Global Crossings, Tyco, WorldCom, Arthur Anderson forced ordinary people to be placed in extraordinary positions throughout corporate America. Before its collapse, Enron was a highly regarded energy company located in Houston. However, Enron abused an accounting practice known as mark-to-market accounting. Mark-to-market accounting generally refers to accounting practices that update the value of an asset to its current market levels. The Enron scandal caused people to question the reliability of the financial reporting practices of publicly traded corporations. And this scandal resulted in the loss of employment for over 4,000 employees. Sharon Watkins is viewed by many supporters as the whistleblower who uncovered the Enron scandal, where shareholders lost nearly $11 billion. The stock market received still another king-sized jolt from the second largest long-distance company in the United States, as WorldCom was then charged with fraud by the U.S. regulators. WorldCom grew from a small long-distance company, largely by aggressively acquiring 60 other telecom companies in 15 years. From 1999 to 2002, WorldCom had manipulated earnings by using fraudulent accounting methods and thereby presenting a false image of economic growth and prosperity. This fraud of billions became one of the biggest accounting scandals in U.S. history and resulted in the loss of employment for over 37,000 employees. Whistleblower Cynthia Cooper and her dedicated subordinates discovered the $3.8 billion accounting fraud. Not surprisingly, Watkins and Cooper's exposure of corporate corruption also led to the indictment and subsequent dismantling of Arthur Anderson, one of the five largest audit and accountancy partnerships in the world. This corporate scandal caused another 8,500 employees to lose their jobs. On July 30, 2002, Congress passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, a uniform national anti-retaliation piece of legislation. The SOX set new or enhanced standards for all U.S. public company boards, management, and public accounting firms. A large number of Foreign and Corrupt Practices Act prosecutions grew out of the post-Enron concerns regarding marketplace integrity. The effects of poor corporate social responsibility, however, continued to lead to more setbacks, which adversely affected the American economy. In these cases, whistleblowers made public interest a priority over organizational loyalty. We, of course, also can't forget Bernie Madoff in the Ponzi scheme. Bernie was once the non-executive chairman of the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Concerns about his business surfaced as early as 1999, when a financial analyst informed the SEC that he believed it was legally and mathematically impossible to achieve the gains Madoff was claiming to deliver. Harry Marco Polo spent nine years fruitlessly trying to convince the SEC that Madoff's investment operation was a scam. Law enforcers around the country have begun to take a new interest in corporate crime and the importance of whistleblowers. In testimony before Congress on July 20, 2010, the SEC Chairman Mary Shapiro indicated that establishing a robust whistleblower program was a high priority for the Commission to incentivize people to come forward with information which the SEC would otherwise not receive. On July 21, 2010, President Obama signed into law the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act in an effort to once again incentivize whistleblowing. Unlike the previous SEC insider trading bounty programs that were discretionary, the whistleblower bounties under the Dodd-Frank Act were mandatory. 
Basically, the program allowed persons who provided information which led to successful SEC enforcement to receive between 10 to 30 percent of any monetary sanction over a million dollars. Some countries have imposed new responsibilities on lawyers and accountants to act as gatekeepers in domestic and international transactions and occasion to act as a whistleblower, particularly in cases where there's reason to suspect that the abuse of the corporate form is facilitating crime or terrorist activities. The war against terror is as strong as its weakest link. Limiting the resources available to terrorist groups may prevent some attacks from taking place or reduce the devastating impact of others. Unfortunately, however, whistleblowers who expose corruption sometimes not only face risks of being harassed or sued by their employer for breach of confidentiality, but they're also exposed to physical violence or even death. It's imperative that whistleblowers are provided the adequate protection they deserve. So, can ethics be taught? Academic research shows that ethical classes affect people's action in a positive manner. Teaching ethics will have at least some impact upon the ethical perspectives and behavior of those being taught. Today, academia is striving to provide students with a better foundation of how fraud occurs, so you can be attuned to the areas of potential abuse. Still, however, in many cases, variables, possible consequences, and overlooked or misunderstood facts makes accurate risk assessment close to impossible. Individuals are often left with only instinct and a vague sense of how to proceed. Many times you will not see the paper trail, but your instincts will tell you that something's not right. What's most important in these situations is knowing when to ask for help. When you're the rookie, sometimes it will be difficult to determine the appropriate mode of behavior. In these situations, you often assume that others will know more about the situation and know better what to do. This is referred to as the herd mentality. Behaving as others behave often seems very sensible. This can sometimes be a problem if you're working with bad apples, as you may not always make the right choices. You need to learn to spot the issues. Only then will you be better equipped to aid in the prevention of fraud.